Summary of Noise, A Flaw in Human Judgment by Daniel Kahneman. Let enjoy the video, please subscribing to my channel for more great content like this. You'll be notified when I upload new videos. Overall Summary Noise, A Flaw in Human Judgment explores the concept of noise in decision-making processes across various fields. The authors define noise as unwanted variability in judgments that should be identical. Unlike bias, which causes systematic deviations, noise causes random scatter in decisions. The book argues that noise is a pervasive problem in human judgment, often overlooked but potentially more harmful than bias in many situations. Key Topics 1. Understanding Noise Definition and Types of Noise Pattern Noise Level Noise Occasion Noise Differentiating between noise and bias. The hidden impact of noise in various domains, legal, medical, financial, etc. 2. Measuring noise. Noise audits and how to conduct them. Statistical methods for quantifying noise. Real world examples of noise measurements in different fields. 3. Sources of noise. Cognitive factors, mood, fatigue, recent experiences. Environmental factors, time of day, weather. Individual differences in judgment styles and preferences. 4. Consequences of noise. Unfairness and inequality in decision outcomes. Economic costs and inefficiencies. Erosion of trust in institutions and systems. 5. Noise reduction strategies. Decision hygiene, principles for cleaner decision making. Structured guidelines and decision protocols. Aggregating multiple independent judgments. The role of algorithms and artificial intelligence in reducing noise. 6. Judgmental forecasting. Techniques for improving prediction accuracy. Combining human judgment with statistical models. The importance of keeping track of and learning from past predictions. 7. The psychology of noise. Why people are generally unaware of noise. Overconfidence and the illusion of agreement. The difficulty in distinguishing signal from noise. 8. Noise in specific domains. Criminal justice and sentencing disparities. Medical diagnoses and treatment decisions. Financial forecasts and investment choices. Personnel decisions and performance evaluations. 9. Ethical considerations. Balancing noise reduction with human autonomy. The potential downsides of excessive standardization. Fairness and accountability in algorithm-assisted decisions. 10. Organizational implications. Creating a culture of decision quality. Training and tools for noise-aware leadership. Implementing noise audits and reduction programs. 11. The future of decision-making. The evolving relationship between human judgment and artificial intelligence. Prospects for noise reduction in various fields. Challenges and opportunities in creating less noisy systems. The book provides a comprehensive exploration of noise, its impacts, and strategies for mitigation. It challenges readers to recognize the prevalence of noise in their own judgments and decision-making processes, and offers practical tools for individuals and organizations to improve the quality and consistency of their decisions. What is noise? Imagine you're in a courtroom, where two judges are about to sentence individuals for similar crimes. You might expect the sentences to be roughly the same, given similar circumstances. But often, they're not. One judge might hand down a two-year sentence, while another might give eight years for a nearly identical case. This disparity, this unwanted variability in judgments that should be identical, is what Kahneman and his colleagues call noise. Noise isn't just about different people making different judgments. It's also about the same person making different judgments at different times. Picture a doctor examining x-rays. On Monday morning, well-rested and in a good mood, they might confidently diagnose a small anomaly as benign. But on Friday afternoon, tired and stressed, that same doctor looking at the same x-ray might decide to order a biopsy, just to be safe. This variability in a single individual's judgment is also noise. The book provides a striking real-world example from the insurance industry. In one study, experienced insurance underwriters were asked to price the same policy. The results were shocking. The highest price was 242% of the lowest price for the same risk. 
This means that if one underwriter priced a policy at $9,500, another might have priced it at $16,700. This massive variation occurred despite all underwriters having access to the same information and working for the same company. Another vivid example comes from the realm of asylum decisions. The authors cite a study showing that the probability of an asylum seeker being granted asylum could vary by up to 50% depending on which judge heard their case. This means that for some asylum seekers, their fate hinged not on the merits of their case, but on the random assignment of a judge. Kahneman and his co-authors argue that noise is everywhere, affecting decisions in medicine, law, business, and even our personal lives. They contend that while we often focus on bias, systematic errors that skew decisions in a particular direction, we tend to overlook noise, which causes random scatter in our judgments. The book goes on to explain different types of noise. There's level noise, where some judges are consistently more lenient or harsh than others. There's pattern noise, where judges might differ in how they weigh various factors. And there's occasion noise where the same judge might make different decisions depending on external factors like weather or their mood. What makes noise particularly insidious is its invisibility. Unlike bias, which can often be detected by looking at average outcomes, noise hides in the variability of individual decisions. It's only when we look at many similar decisions side by side that the extent of noise becomes apparent. The authors argue that noise is not just a statistical curiosity, it has real-world consequences. In the legal system, it can mean the difference between freedom and incarceration. In medicine, it can affect diagnoses and treatment plans. In business, it can lead to inconsistent hiring decisions or financial forecasts. By bringing attention to this often overlooked phenomenon, Kahneman and his colleagues hope to inspire individuals and organizations to recognize and reduce noise in their decision-making processes. They argue that by doing so, we can make our judgments fairer, more consistent, and ultimately more beneficial to society as a whole. Three Types of Noise In noise, Kahneman and his co-authors delve into three distinct types of noise that can affect decision-making, level noise, pattern noise, and occasion noise. Let's explore each of these in more detail, with real examples from the book. 1. Level Noise Level noise refers to consistent differences between decision-makers and their average judgments. Imagine a group of judges sentencing criminals for similar crimes. Some judges might consistently hand out harsher sentences, while others might be more lenient across the board. A striking example of level noise comes from a study of French judges mentioned in the book. These judges were asked to decide on parole applications. The study found that some judges granted parole in about 15% of cases, while others granted it in up to 85% of cases. This enormous disparity existed despite the judges operating under the same legal framework and dealing with similar cases. In the business world, level noise might manifest in performance evaluations. Some managers might consistently rate their employees more favorably, while others might be known for their tough grading. This can lead to unfair outcomes where an employee's evaluation depends more on which manager they're assigned to than on their actual performance. 2. Pattern Noise Pattern noise occurs when different decision-makers have different approaches to weighing various factors. It's not about being consistently harsh or lenient, but about prioritizing different aspects of a decision differently. The authors provide an example from the world of wine tasting. Two experienced wine critics might agree on the overall quality of a set of wines, but disagree significantly on individual bottles. One critic might place more importance on a wine's aroma, while another might prioritize its finish. This leads to different patterns in their ratings, even if their average ratings are similar. In a medical context, pattern noise might appear in how doctors interpret symptoms. One doctor might place more weight on family history, while another might focus more on current lifestyle factors. This can lead to different diagnoses or treatment plans for the same patient, depending on which doctor they see. 3. Occasion Noise Occasion noise refers to variability in judgments made by the same person at different times or in different contexts. This type of noise highlights how external factors can influence our decision-making, often without us realizing it. A fascinating example from the book comes from a study of parole judges. 
the researchers found that the likelihood of a favorable parole decision dropped gradually from about 65% to nearly zero within each decision session and jumped back up to around 65% after a food break. This suggests that factors as seemingly irrelevant as hunger or fatigue can significantly impact important decisions. Another example of occasion noise comes from the field of medicine. The book cites a study where radiologists were asked to examine the same x-rays twice, several months apart. Surprisingly, in about 20% of cases, they gave different diagnoses to the same x-ray. This highlights how even highly trained professionals can make different judgments about the same information on different occasions. Occasion noise can also be influenced by recent experiences. For instance, a loan officer who has just dealt with a series of defaulted loans might become more conservative in their lending decisions, even if the current applicant's case is unrelated to the previous defaults. Understanding these three types of noise is crucial because each requires different strategies to mitigate. Level noise might be addressed through standardized guidelines or decision aids. Pattern noise might require more explicit discussions about how different factors should be weighed. Occasion noise might be reduced by creating more consistent decision-making environments and being aware of potential external influences. By breaking down noise into these categories, Kahneman and his colleagues provide a framework for understanding and addressing the variability in human judgment, paving the way for more consistent and fair decision-making across various fields. What causes noise? Kahneman delved deep into the causes of noise in human judgment. They argue that noise stems from a complex interplay of factors, both internal and external to the decision-maker. Let's explore these causes in more detail, with examples from the book. One of the primary causes of noise is the inherent complexity of many decisions. In fields like medicine, law, or finance, professionals often deal with multifaceted problems that require weighing numerous factors. This complexity leaves room for individual interpretation and judgment, which can lead to noise. For instance, the book discusses a study of insurance underwriters tasked with pricing policies. These professionals had to consider a wide range of factors, the nature of the risk, the client's history, market conditions, and more. The sheer number of variables involved made it difficult for underwriters to consistently weigh all factors, resulting in significant variations in policy pricing. Another major cause of noise is the influence of irrelevant factors on our decision-making. These can be as subtle as our mood, the weather, or even the time of day. The authors provide a striking example from the legal system. They cite a study showing that judges were more likely to grant parole early in the day or after a food break. As the hours passed without a break, the likelihood of a favorable decision decreased dramatically. This suggests that factors as seemingly irrelevant as hunger can significantly impact important decisions. Personal preferences and experiences also play a crucial role in causing noise. Each decision-maker brings their own set of beliefs, values, and experiences to the table, which can color their judgment. The book illustrates this with an example from the world of wine tasting. Even among expert sommeliers, personal preferences for certain flavor profiles can lead to significant variations in wine ratings. Cognitive biases and heuristics are another source of noise. These mental shortcuts, while often useful, can lead to inconsistencies in judgment. For example, the availability heuristic might cause a doctor to overestimate the likelihood of a rare disease if they've recently encountered a case, leading to variations in diagnoses over time. The lack of clear, objective criteria for many decisions is yet another cause of noise. In fields where judgments are inherently subjective, such as art criticism or performance evaluations, the absence of concrete benchmarks can lead to wide variations in assessments. The book discusses how even in more structured fields like credit scoring, the lack of precise definitions for terms like good character can result in noisy judgments. Information overload and time pressure can also contribute to noise. When decision-makers are bombarded with excessive information or forced to make quick judgments, they may resort to inconsistent shortcuts or fail to consider all relevant factors. The authors provide an example from emergency rooms, where the pressure to make rapid decisions can lead to variations in triage assessments. Inadequate training or guidelines is another factor the book identifies. When decision-makers lack clear protocols or sufficient practice, they're more likely to rely on personal judgment, leading to increased noise. 
the authors discuss how implementing structured guidelines in fields like forensic science has helped reduce noise in assessments. Lastly, the book points out that our tendency to trust our intuitions can be a significant source of noise. We often overestimate the consistency and accuracy of our own judgments. This overconfidence can prevent us from recognizing the noise in our decisions and taking steps to mitigate it. An illustrative example comes from a study of loan officers mentioned in the book. These professionals were asked to estimate the probability of loan defaults based on case files. Not only did their estimates vary widely, but when presented with the same case twice, disguised differently, they often gave significantly different estimates. What's more, most loan officers expressed high confidence in their judgments, unaware of their own inconsistency. By identifying these various causes of noise, Kahneman and his colleagues provide a framework for understanding why our judgments can be so variable. They argue that recognizing these sources of noise is the first step toward developing strategies to reduce it, ultimately leading to fairer, more consistent decision-making across various domains. Strategies to Reduce Noise Kahneman not only identify the problem of noise in decision-making but also offer a range of strategies to mitigate it. They refer to these strategies collectively as decision hygiene. Let's explore these strategies in detail, with examples from the book. One of the key strategies proposed is the use of algorithms and decision rules. The authors argue that in many situations, simple algorithms can outperform human judgment in terms of consistency and accuracy. They cite a famous example from the world of wine, where a simple formula based on weather patterns predicted wine quality better than expert tasters. While they don't suggest completely replacing human judgment with algorithms, they advocate for using algorithms as decision aids to reduce noise. Another important strategy is what the authors call breaking down decisions into multiple independent judgments. Instead of asking one person to make a complex decision, the idea is to divide the decision into smaller components and have different people assess each part independently. The book discusses how some organizations use this approach in hiring decisions. Instead of having one interviewer assess a candidate on all criteria, multiple interviewers each focus on specific aspects of the candidate's qualifications. This approach can help reduce the impact of individual biases and inconsistencies. The authors also emphasize the importance of creating structured guidelines and checklists. By providing decision-makers with clear, step-by-step -step processes to follow, organizations can reduce the variability in how decisions are made. The book cites the example of the aviation industry, where the use of pre-flight checklists has significantly improved safety by ensuring consistent adherence to crucial procedures. Another strategy discussed is the wisdom of crowds approach, or what the authors call decision observers. This involves aggregating judgments from multiple independent decision-makers. The book provides an example from a study where groups of students were asked to estimate the weight of an ox. While individual guesses varied widely, the average of all guesses was remarkably accurate. Applied to real-world decisions, this strategy can help cancel out individual noise and produce more reliable judgments. The authors also stress the importance of providing decision-makers with timely and relevant feedback. Many professionals, they argue, operate in wicked learning environments where the consequences of their decisions are not immediately apparent or are confounded by other factors. By creating systems that provide clear, prompt feedback on decision quality, organizations can help decision-makers calibrate their judgments over time. The book discusses how some medical institutions have implemented systems to track diagnostic accuracy and provide doctors with regular feedback, leading to improvements in consistency and accuracy. Another key strategy is what the authors call decision sequencing. This involves structuring the decision-making process to minimize the influence of irrelevant factors. For instance, in hiring decisions, they suggest reviewing candidates' qualifications before meeting them in person to reduce the impact of first impressions or unconscious biases. The book also advocates for noise audits systematic assessments of variability in an organization's decision-making processes. By quantifying noise, organizations can become aware of the extent of the problem and track improvements over time. The authors describe how some financial institutions have conducted noise audits of their loan approval processes, leading to the implementation of more consistent decision-making protocols. One particularly interesting strategy discussed is the use of Mediating Assessments Protocol, MAP. 
This involves breaking down a decision into its key components, having decision makers assess each component separately before making an overall judgment. The authors describe how some venture capital firms have adopted this approach, requiring investors to rate startups on specific criteria, like market potential, team quality, etc., before making an overall investment decision. This helps reduce the impact of gut feelings or overly dominant factors in the decision process. Lastly, the book emphasizes the importance of creating a decision-observant culture within organizations. This involves fostering an environment where people are aware of the potential for noise and are encouraged to question and improve their decision-making processes continually. The authors discuss how some progressive judicial systems have implemented peer review processes, where judges regularly discuss and review each other's sentencing decisions, promoting more consistent application of the law. By implementing these strategies, Kahneman and his colleagues argue that organizations and individuals can significantly reduce noise in their decision-making processes. While they acknowledge that completely eliminating noise is impossible, they contend that even modest reductions can lead to substantial improvements in fairness, efficiency, and overall decision quality across various domains. Conclusion That brings us to the end of this book of noise, a flaw in human judgment. The book reveals that noise is much more pervasive than most people imagine. Noise often results in unfairness and compromise. Behind the problem with noise lies people's psychological biases. Our instinctive reactions to different subjects encountered in different scenarios will vary drastically. That is why human judgments and decisions are full of noise. In order to subdue noise levels, the authors recommend enlisting the most excellent judges and using a tightly structured decision-making process. Given that most of us are not gifted and highly intelligent experts, how can we filter out noise as much as possible? One of the traits of a good decision-maker is to maintain an open mind. We ought to be adaptable and ready to accommodate new evidence even if it refutes our heartfelt initial impressions, opinions, and beliefs. Furthermore, the book advises not to be overly reliant on intuition, as it is particularly susceptible to psychological and environmental bias. A carefully conceived and structured decision-making process is the best fail-safe. Thank you for listening. I hope this content is useful to you. If you like this kind of content, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel to support our team.